episode number 144 of the LSR Podcast. My name is Matt Brown, joined each and every week by the brightest minds in all of the gaming industry. With me, I have Dustin Galker. I have Adam Candy. You can follow them on the Twitter machine for free. Just smash the button at Dustin Galker at Adam Candy to ease no why. If you hate yourself, you can get me at Matt Brown M2. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, all the places you get your podcast, subscribe, rate, review. We really do appreciate it. We will have the state roundup as usual. Adam will let us know what's going on in the short little blurbs from around the country. We'll talk about New York and some licenses. We will see what happened in Illinois with March Madness. But let's kick off just a more broad, more general discussion here to kick off the pod. And I want to ask you guys just what 2022 looks like generally from a legislation standpoint, because there are some people out there sitting in their state and we have mentioned their state probably a a dozen to two dozen times on this podcast in various forms of maybe possibly potentially getting something done. And I'm sure they're wondering what is going to happen in my state or what is coming down the pike, maybe next year, whatever it might be. So I just want to kind of open the floor to you guys and and let you discuss where we are right now in some of these states and where we are kind of leading to. Yeah, I'll start it off. Adam and I were just talking about this separately, not on the podcast. And I'm like, yeah, maybe this makes a good Mm -hmm. podcast topic, but the map kind of looks bleak. And I know, I know I'm a, an eternal pessimist on, (laughs) on sports betting legalization. I've set a line that was exceeded the over every year, but we may actually get, I think I put three and a half States, new, new States to legalize this year. And man, I'm uh, the under, as we sit here looking like a good bet. There are not a whole lot of States where we have even guaranteed or like a really good chance of movement. And we talk about these every week to some degree, but I, you know, just to, To put it out there, like right now we have Kansas looks pretty good. Missouri, if Kansas legalized, we also think has a pretty good chance. But as we sit here, the everything else looks kind of dire in terms of whether we think it's going to happen or not. We've taken some states off the board like Georgia already. Um, So this I mean, this is kind of the why we've been saying this for a long time. There's a lot of states that have already legalized something. That means the available bucket of states legalized guys is smaller. So it's not like this God given right that we're all just always going to have new states legalize things. And then we have other states that have legalized some form of sports betting, but don't yet have uh, online sports betting or a competitive market. So there's, there's a lot going on here and it's, it's interesting for the market dynamics is because, you know, big companies like DraftKings and FanDuel and MGM are counting on this growth for their own growth and for their shareholders. And then it looks, yeah, it starts looking when you look at the map and start breaking it down, Again, maybe I end up being a pessimist, but the map doesn't look real great for for new states legalizing in twenty twenty three. Adam, what are you what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What is it? What is what do you see maybe coming down the pike a little bit? So to what Dustin said, I think the most important point in there was we had a much smaller pool to choose from this year, and the states that hadn't legalized up until this point, or at least hadn't legalized mobile, uh there were very clear reasons for the opposition, right? Uh, There are only a couple of states left at this point that we're kind of scratching our heads and saying, okay, why haven't they legalized? Because it seems like they have the ability to do so, the will to do so, and the company's pushing them to do so. So what states are those? Um, Massachusetts is at the top of the list where you look and say, how exactly is it that this has not happened yet? Like, The big dig happened faster in Boston than this has happened in Massachusetts, and it feels like there's just no sense of urgency there, which given the fact that DraftKings is headquartered in Massachusetts always feels like something that does not make a lot of sense, right? Georgia is close, but not quite. We understand the cultural opposition that is there in Georgia. The South is never a guarantee when it comes to legalizing gambling in any form. Uh, Georgia, of course, would have to change the Constitution. So... But other states that we look at, what are the obvious barriers that we see? Some of them have religious or cultural opposition, as I mentioned. Some of them have tribal gaming interests that have a large measure of control over the market, right? We we saw this happen with Florida. We saw the concerns of tribal gaming kind of steamrolled in New York uh, for the most part. And of course, California, it's going to be all about uh, what happens with tribal gaming interests. So Texas, of course, is kind of, you know, down the line a little bit, but I think the upshot of all of this is that 
whatever money we thought was going to be spent in California, go ahead and just add more and more to that pot of how much money is going to be spent on those ballot initiatives in California. Because if you're one of these big companies that has to answer to shareholders and you're looking at the map this year and saying, okay, Kansas, but how big is Kansas really going to be? There are what I believe one professional sports team plays in Kansas. Uh, you have an MLS team playing in Kansas right now. Uh, you have Missouri, which will be a little bit larger. And then really, what are you expecting before Ohio comes to pass either at the very end of this year or at the beginning of 2023? So I think you look at California and say the fight over California is going to be even more intense than what you might initially have imagined. And we're kind of and we're picking at the margins, like again, a lot of the states that we're talking about, not huge states, obviously Missouri, a fairly sizable state if they were to get through mm. and some of these others, too. But like, yeah, I mean, these these aren't necessarily needle movers. And yeah, I, I, I look at it from that standpoint, like, you know, if you're good, if you're, you know, if you're not, if you're not getting growth via, you know, or through just growing your brand and getting more customers in existing states, you're pointing to, oh, the opportunity is still larger, both sports betting. And we always kind of tack on casino as, as a, as some, as a, something that stands out there that, that has not been fully realized in the United States in addition to poker. But like, yeah, i I totally agree with Adam. Like you, you, I look at the map and I'm, I'm going, you know, to use the poker reference, all in on California if I am one of these companies and spending a bazillion dollars because if you don't get California and, yeah, you're counting on Texas meeting in a short time frame next year to get done. You have Florida out there. You need another, probably need another ballot measure till 2024. Like that's – we keep talking about these three states, but they're hanging out there and very uncertain – and you're really your right. Your best bet right now is California. You got you, you could you can get a ballot measure on there. You can get online sports spending with commercial entities uh, operating outside. And that's that. That to me is it's good. it should be the story of the rest of the year. Is that this this push should happen? You have the leagues. You have the, the all the major operators kind of pushing for this. Uh, obviously, the other side of this is the tribal the tribal casinos, which really have not really expressed interest for this and want their own want this to happen on their terms. So. Yeah, I mean, I would spend infinity money on California if I am any of these companies trying to, you know, trying to change and flip the map um, a little, a little bit election style. But yeah, it looks, it looks bad to me. Just as we hear, yeah, there's dribs and drabs of news, and it's like, yeah, we we don't know what's going to happen in any states, and you, you need a lot of them to happen for there to be like a meaningful population increase if you're not getting one of these three big states. So if you look at that and start to play the long game, Dustin, and think about what companies have chosen to go all in at the jump. Versus what companies have kind of said, okay, you know what, we're going to hold off a little bit and wait to see how this develops. I think what you look and see is that if you're a company like DraftKings or PointsBet, who we've talked about as companies where cash on hand could become a concern here before too long, you're probably going to have to start moving harder into retention than acquisition, right? Uh, unless you're going to go out there and try to steal customers from another sports book, or unless you're going to try to buy up a smaller competitor and maybe consolidate your market share a little bit. Because right now, if we don't have another big state come along here, and I guess Ohio is going to be maybe a boon for some of these uh, states that haven't, uh, I should say for some of these companies that haven't been able to see much growth of late. I think beyond that, you look to say, okay, if you're one of these companies where cash on hand has at least been a concern on investor calls, how long are you going to be able to keep the lights on if we don't have another big state or another set of smaller states that can add up, come along and legalize here sometime soon? I think that's why the failure to qualify that ballot initiative in Florida by DraftKings at all was a major, major failure that should not have happened for companies of that size with that amount of capital to put into it. The fact that they didn't manage to get something qualified in Florida could be one of those things we look back on at the end of the year, the end of the decade even, and say, wow, that really changed the trajectory of U.S. sports betting. So you kind of briefly mentioned it there, Dustin, but I do want to Let's do look at one of the the bigger fish there then at the very beginning of next year, because we do know for whatever weird reason, Texas legislature only meets every two years. What we should do is have one of our very biggest states only meet every two years to uh, to decide what's going to go on in one of our very biggest states. But uh, listen, there was a lot of buzz at the end of their last legislative session. We knew it wasn't going to get done then, but it was kind of setting the groundwork for 2023. You heard some very big names tied to wanting to get something done, namely Jerry Jones, namely Mark Cuban. 
as guys who are super powerful, super wealthy within that state, who throw around a lot of money. Obviously, uh, Tillman Fertitta also is based in that state. And, and so there are a lot of very rich, very powerful dudes who are going to be trying to get something push through here that being said not only do they only meet every two years they don't meet all, they don't meet for very long every two years as well and so where do what do we think about texas what do we i mean you know it seemed like there was at least some sort of a swell there at the very very end of 2021 but knowing that we were gonna have to wait to 2023 i mean jerry wants sports betting that's all we need to know right jerry jones wants sports betting he gets sports <laughs> betting is that is it as simple as that i don't know probably not it's not that simple um, but he, I mean, everything points to the fran- the leagues, the, the teams there, you know, they have an outsized influence there. We have seen teams insert themselves into the conversation in other states. Uh, they hold license. They are the license holders in Arizona, for instance. They, or, I mean, they, they, they allow other sports books to hold the license. They are the one, the means through which that happens. You know, they have involvement in Ohio. They have involvement everywhere now. And, you know, the, these franchises are huge and have, and, and have a lot of pull. So uh, yeah, I'm, I feel like maybe I'm maybe I'm off base, but I feel like Texas should get done. That being said, yes, it is a super short legislative season. Um, there, any 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 we can see any manner of things derail anything in sports betting legislation and gambling legislation. And Texas is not a place that is, you know, has been been uh, gung ho on legalizing anything toward around gambling. So it's fraught with peril. But I, you know, I feel like there's yeah there's there's all the, the teams want this. They've been they've been setting mm-hmm. the stage for two years. This is going to be a huge legislate a uh, huge lobbying push in Texas. I'm sure once once things open up and is going on in the background, but. Yeah, I, f- I feel like I, f- I'm, I feel like it's better than a coin flip as we sit here, just because of that dynamic. I don't have any specific intel to say that, but just this dynamic where yes, you're if you're a, you know a team or a, a sports book and you're trying to prove growth, this is this is where it comes from. You, you know, you, you don't you see it in all these deals that we're seeing floated around. You know, everybody does a, an arena deal every other day, and those, these are mm. worth tens of millions of dollars. They want you know. You know, Jerry and Mark Cuban and everybody else, they want the, they want that money and they're probably not going to get it unless they get sports betting legalized in their state. Adam, am I being naive to think that even though they only officially meet every two years, that there has to be at least something getting done right now, right behind the scenes of, again, the Jerry Joneses, the Mark Cubans, the Tillman Fertitas, the other people you know, getting people together, talking through these things and, and trying to like basically say like, all right, look, let's hit the ground running as soon as this as soon as we fire this up in January so that we're not dilly dallying around here with this. You have neglected to mention the one name that I thought you were going to mention, even though that name is never to be said on this podcast. Uh, he is a gentleman with a large investment in furniture in Houston. Yeah. Who I'm sure would like to be able to bet That's true. in his own state as well, who might That's be true. pushing for this. And I'm only half joking because there are a nope. lot of people with deep pockets who uh, uh, want yeah. this to happen, right? And so, he has become a pseudo celebrity, you yeah, know. He in, in absolutely that, yeah. has. Uh, and so, no, you are uh, you are in no way naive. Of course, this is happening right now. Let me take you back to December when we had the National uh, Conference of Legislators from Gaming States in Austin, and uh, Dan Huberty one of the representatives from the house there who has been very involved in gaming issues spoke to the conference and it kind of gave, I'll call it a cautious note of optimism basically said, look, this is something we've talked about. This is something we're working on. This is something we know you're interested in. Now I'll give you a caution to that. He's not running for reelection. Um, So (laughs) it'll have have to be other people who are picking up that ball, but yes, it's absolutely being discussed. Look at the fact that we've seen deals announced, right? We've already seen the Rockets announce a deal for sports betting if it ever happens in Texas. And it's not the only one. We've seen Austin uh, FC announce a a similar deal too. Like these sports betting deals are already in place in anticipation of something happening in Texas. So yes, I think that when you say there are more interests than not who want to get something done in Texas, you're absolutely speaking the truth. Then again, think about New York Think about other places mm-hmm. where there have been similar feelings of built up demand that still take a while to get done. Dustin went ahead and, and gave it better than a coin flip. Would you would you also better than a coin flip on Texas? No, yeah. uh, I, I think a coin flip even is just about fair. I, and it's largely because of the fact that Texas is such a diverse state when it comes to the potential for things that could derail it. Um, 
Keep in mind, it's a state that's going to be a cultural touchstone here when its legislature comes around. There have been a lot of discussions around uh, what's gone on in Texas with much larger issues over the last few months. And when those begin to take over the legislature, it might have nothing to do with sports betting. It might have nothing to do with right. whether people want it done or not. There just might not be time. So I think coin flip is probably the top of where I'd go, maybe even a slight dog. Yeah, when you think about I mean, they're also just part-time employees. Yeah, they only work doing this. Yeah. Few, like they, they have other jobs. This is not their job, right? This is, it's, it's weird to talk about this and it gets into the weeds and wonky part yeah. of what we do. But this is, this is the dynamic in other states and some other states too where this is not – their full time jobs, so they're coming back in cold and like yes, yes. While they're while power mm. people in leadership are doing that are talking about this maybe, but like it's very it, there's going to be a lot of things that you need to get done in Texas mm. and is sports betting really at the top of this list, you know, right? Not maybe not. Like it's it's it is like can you get in the conver- can you get this conversation started and the bill moving right away? And yeah, like better to coin flip maybe only minus one twenty. I'm, I'm not. It's. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree with Adam. It's like there, there's. I mean, this can go wrong any any millions of ways, and it it, it just takes you know it just takes this takes something small that can it's like oh the, we have other priorities. Something happens in the world that or in Texas that's like okay we have to focus on this and like bright shiny object right. over here sports betting. Gets 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 because it's not that important of an issue. It does have yes, it has these power players that really want it, but that doesn't mean it's going to get done. Adam, let's move over to New York, and this is a little bit of a change of what we thought was, well, at least a little bit of an addition here of what we uh, were talking about when we were saying more players joining the party over there. Yeah, so I think what's interesting about what ultimately happened with the New York budget is that I think the less likely of two things ultimately came around in that budget where it looks like we're going to have casino expansion in New York, but not sports betting expansion. Uh, There are nine licenses for sports betting. There had been a push out there uh, at least started by uh, Senator Adabo and Assemblyman Pretlow to expand to 14 or maybe 16 licenses over the next couple of years. Uh, That's dead as of right now, uh, at least for this year from what we hear uh, that maybe they were a little bit premature in looking at that. But, you know, I think Dustin could speak to this a, a little bit more than I can. But the fact that we might be looking at New York City area casino expansion, I think, is way more significant than do we add sports betting licenses. I mean, absolutely. I mean, these are licenses that are going to go for, uh, what, half a million, uh, half a billion dollars. Uh, it was originally mm-hmm. like a billion for a license. Like everybody would like a casino. This has been lobbied for a long time in the background. And um, it, yeah, I mean, a casino in New York will do, you know, obviously, uh, I, infin- infinity money. This is, yeah, I mean, no like, yes, like just d- put, put a number on a piece of paper and then just start adding zeros. Like, cause like whatever you, you didn't put enough zeros uh, on it for sure. No doubt, yeah, and like they have slot machines, and there's there's, there's things mm. around New York, but no full style casino to make to be clear. And but yeah, sports betting is obviously a piece of this. It's not going to be like sports books there. And we don't think uh, unless you know uh, there's probably ways around it. They, New York has been obviously been creative with the law around uh, how they expand gambling, but yeah, a casino. Yeah, I mean this this, dwar- this dwarfs everything else in comparison. Uh, mm. Yeah, adding some operators is such a little tiny piece of news compared to <laughs> casinos in New York City. All right, Dustin, tell us about uh, what went on in Illinois during the month of March. Yeah, we saw uh, Illinois, which we're usually behind on. We saw some uh, March Madness handle numbers, and this gives us uh, some insight into the differences between uh, the in-person registration and uh, remote registration now taking place. Up to, uh, we saw $286 million wagered in Illinois on March Madness on the men's and women's tournaments. Uh, that's up from $176 million last year. So, again, this is this is uh, 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 beating a dead horse, but... This this has helped. This has created mm-hmm. uh, we've seen a groundswell of interest in in Illinois sports betting. Uh, I mean, they already had some remote registration, had some customers, but they're now growing the market. And I think it's you know, I think it's going to be clear that Illinois is going to be one of the biggest markets now that we've t- it already was, but now is going to grow uh, even more that we've kind of taken the throttle off of things here. As a side note, uh, I'd just like to point out Barstool somehow lost money taking bets on March Madness. Good job there. I mean, some of that's promos, but I guess. Some trading, but like you, nobody, nobody else in Illinois lost money on on March Madness, and, and Barstool managed to accomplish that uh, not so great feat. Uh, Adam, as we look at the numbers there from Illinois coming out in March, we typically see FanDuel lead the way in most of these states that we're looking at, but we did see DraftKings lead the way, which is interesting because we haven't seen that 
in a while in a lot of these big states. What we've seen with DraftKings is that in a number of states, they've gotten off to a fast start, and then FanDuel kind of slow and steady has mm -hmm. won the race uh, coming from behind there. And really, in Illinois, no one's going to benefit from uh, the remote registration opening up more fully than DraftKings because DraftKings bought a riverboat on the Missouri mm -hmm. border as its physical location. Like, yeah. you weren't getting anybody in there to sign up if they weren't coming mm -hmm. from St. Louis. So the fact that they now have it wide open... Obviously, I mean, look, th this was the nightmare scenario for Rivers, right? Like, this is why mm -hmm. Rivers lobbied so hard to keep FanDuel and DraftKings out of the market because Neil Bloom knew that once they got in, that Rivers' home field advantage was going to be nil. So, yeah, it is notable to see uh, DraftKings getting that edge early on. And as always, take us home, my man, with the little state blurbs. This is going to be sort of like I have one of those Elon Musk people movers and I can go a lot faster than everybody else because I can <laughs> go across the country in a hurry with not a whole lot going on right now. Uh, another hearing in Missouri, another time when the bill doesn't come up. Again, we've cleared one chamber. We are trying to move it through the Senate on the other side in Missouri. Again, they continue to, uh, we'll say, deliberate deliberately in Missouri on that bill. Kansas, we're really just counting down the days now until the legislature comes back into session later in the month, at which point we hope, we think, uh, the bill that made it through conference will pass through both chambers and go to Governor Kelly for her signature. But I've said this a hundred times before about different states. You want to finish it when you've got the momentum to finish it because you have no idea what 20 other things could pop up over the course of a three-week break before you have a chance to vote on it again. So I think it's being looked at as a sure thing. I'll call it a, a good favorite, not a sure thing, in uh, the state of Kansas. A couple that I just want to mention also, Arkansas. Hey, remember when Arkansas was going to go mobile? Uh, still hasn't actually happened. Like, it's legal. <laughs> Hasn't actually yeah. happened. Maybe going for 51% of revenue wasn't the smartest decision when you're Arkansas and not New York. Uh, and speaking of New York, we see that $58 million in tax revenue in March. I have to be honest, when I saw the projections of $500 million in a year in tax revenue for New York, I was fully into cool story bro mode. And mm -hmm. they actually are tracking... If you account for seasonality here and the fact that mm -hmm. next football season could be even bigger, they're tracking pretty well toward that 500 million, at least in, in year one. Uh, we don't know if that will continue right. based on you know the dynamics of that market, but the fact that they might even meet it in one year is a surprise to me. Guys, as always, everything we talk about on the podcast, you can find great words over at LegalSportsReport.com. Be sure Adam and his team work super, super hard doing all of the stuff that you don't want to have to do to make it nice and easy for you to consume the information. So please, LegalSportsReport.com, head over there, take in all of these stories in full over there. And if you want to follow these guys on Twitter, I keep saying it, you should. It's absolutely free. At Dustin Galker, at Adam Candy, to ease, no why subscribe rate and review really do appreciate it for adam for dustin i'm matt talk to you guys next week